not sure if you're all aware, but there's apparently a disease going around. I think it's called COVID-19. Well, either way, I got vaccinated for it. Yay. Before getting vaccinated, I decided to look up the side effects of taking the vaccine. Man, I hope I get these side effects. Why? Makes good content. You're stupid. That's how YouTube has changed my mentality. Whenever I go out, which is rare, I always hope something exciting would happen so I can make a video about it. I sure hope I see something scary on my run. I sure hope I fall off these rocks and get swept away at sea. I sure hope I suffer potential side effects from this shot. Well, I made a video about it, so let's see how it turned out. I am the first out of my family to get the vaccine because I work in fast food industry. Woohoo, benefits! And when I got there, the doctor warned me that I will feel a bit of pain on my arm and it'll last two to three days. In that moment, it hit me. I realized I don't like pain. On one side, if the shot hurts a lot, I can make a video about it. On the other side, if it isn't bad, then my arm will be fine, but no content. Oh no, what am I going to- oh, you're done. Well, that was lame. Damn you, my great immune system! Couldn't you have failed me once? I only had a soreness in my arm and nothing else. But the story doesn't end there. I live in Southern California, where our days are very sunny and at times too hot. And every now and then, we will get an occasional rain. But when I went outside... It was hailing! I'm in a dilemma again. I can either let Mother Nature ice me quite literally, or I could protect my shot wound. I did it for the content. Here it is, my chance to make an amazing story. Ow. It didn't hurt much and I went home. I don't know what I was expecting. Did I think my arm would be like Ashitaka from Princess Mononoke? Okay, but... That would actually be really cool. Do you think in the forest I'll find a woman who was raised by wolves that I'll fall in love with? Because, not gonna lie, that'd be pretty cool too. Well, it's already been a while and no love interest nor bad side effects. Just soreness. I decided to make this video anyway though to relieve some people. The shot is not that bad. Sure, there are potential side effects that could occur, but honestly, all of those side effects are not that bad either. Plus, the faster we are all vaccinated, the closer we get to making things normal again. Trust me, you have nothing to worry about. Unless you are like me and wanted to almost die for content. Sorry, I know your pain. Hey everyone, thank you for watching my videos. It is greatly appreciated. On a more serious note, although this topic of the vaccine is a bit controversial, I wanted to use this platform to inform people. Obviously, though, I'm not the most reliable source for all of this information. I didn't even know till after I finished my script that I have to get two shots. So, yeah, I'll be getting the second one soon. Don't take my experience as a standard as to how the vaccine will be because the side effects affect everyone differently. That's why I put a link in the description that will take you to a site to inform you all about the vaccine. You can just view this animation more of a funny experience than a guide of how the shot will go. We tend to fear what we don't know, so I hope this helps you in preparation for the vaccine. Last message, study up, stay safe, and make smart decisions. Welcome to episode 43, Joker Joker TV Live, the post-vaccination episode. Yeah, uh, we got a special uh, uh, guest host tonight, uh, since we've got uh, Mr. Mux Blank on special assignment. Coming back from a uh, delivery from California of uh, some toys direct uh, from the Joker Joker uh, gallery manufacturing plant. 
So, uh, he is on the road. Talked to him earlier. He is, uh, somewhere between Arkansas and Oklahoma. But, uh, standing in and working on the chat is, uh, Miss Becky Bryan. Welcome to the show, Becky. Hello, everybody. And, uh, behind the controls, we always have, uh, Mr. T. Chad. Uh, handling all of that. Yes. So, uh, yeah, we got an exciting episode. Uh, we just watched, uh, uh, Studio Mickle vaccine from, um, uh, uh, from Panama, or, uh, from, yeah, no, Pomona, California. So, uh, up next, uh, we're gonna be watching some, uh, Sean Pettis Finger Dome. Take it away. Wait, wait, uh, no, wait, 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 am I supposed to mention something else? Oh, uh, uh, well, we're supposed to fly some stuff in, so, uh, in the meantime, while he's, uh, planning on, on, oh, wait, okay, uh, well, yes, we do have, uh, B-Tongue, uh, that's, uh, gonna be, uh, fragile. Okay. And, uh, and then, uh, right after that. Yeah, you know, if you have kids, yeah, you might, uh, parental guidance is, uh, uh, definitely, uh, uh, it, suggested on this one also uh we also want you to know that uh everything that you were watching is uh, uh actually uh, uh the the uh beauty of the artist so uh in no way should anybody be trying to cut off any type of body parts but we'll leave that one to the surprise so uh until then let's watch finger dome I'm Rex Grittison, founder and creator of The Finger Dome, a sanctuary and safe space for feisty fingers. When you first get to the dome, you see all these beautiful fingers, you'll immediately realize that they're all free. They're all here because they want to be here, and they're all doing whatever it is they want to do. We are not and never have been a finger farm. I first created the dome because no matter what I did in life, I could never stop thinking about fingers. The more people I talked to, the more I realized this was true for everyone. Everyone's first memory is either picking or pressing or poking or prodding. I thought that was beautiful and I wanted to do something to honor that. And that is what I will continue to do here at the Finger Dome every single day of my life. Now I'd like to show something to those of you who may be reluctant or afraid to donate your fingers. Beautiful, right? Now these are all my fingers, but only one is an original. Can you guess which one? It's this one. When I was a little boy, I did the right thing. I donated nine of my fingers. I kept the one though, and I recommend you keep one as well to garden with. You know what they say. It takes fingers to make fingers. Now, before you create your finger garden, the first thing you're going to want to do is capture the seeds. Should I grab a different bowl for the film? This one's got a chip in it. Once the seeds have been captured, you need to mix some dirt in with some fertilizer. Then you need to dig a hole using your finger. Like I said, literally all of this gardening can be done with just the one single finger. Now only one seed per hole. Remember that, otherwise the seeds, they'll grow together and they'll swell up and they'll grow into a big fat nose. You should see, the new neighbors have that. Are 
I see something like this. I feel like I'm living in a third world country. Get me out of here. Now it's time to give those thirsty seeds exactly what they want. And that's the juice. They're very thirsty, so give them all the juice you got. You juice them right, they'll point right up at the sky. Now, we wait. Whenever I sit at this table, she joins me. It's like our special time together. When your beautiful new fingers first point up, keep your voice down. They're gonna be shy, they're gonna be timid. It's important to ease them into their environment. Spend a lot of quality time getting to know each individual finger and give them the attention that they deserve. Now that these sweet little fingers have had a chance to calm down, I'm going to transport them to their forever home at the new neighbors. Now it's time for all of you to do what's right. Make a donation. Don't eat your fingers.
will end with a grimace as I'm starting to speak. You're freaking serious, hitting me with a look of surprise on my face. Here is my father with my shot eyes. You are a fucker, let's quit your fucking bubble. I can get you quicker, so you better check it. If I'm almost in trouble with me, run with me. You give me a trouble with the effort of a little bit of me. I'll tell you to the tricks. Blow your dollars, run away, it's a motto, a child of the night I flip my camera, why you bring the dipping into a rap? When you step into my world, you're very stupid, take a thought Well, you meant to go to me, it's not a fucking option Welcome back to episode 43, post-vaccination zone. You know, uh, here we are at the gallery. Uh, what we just watched was uh, uh, X on Metal. And uh, they are actually from uh, Tampa, Florida. Uh, the song is from the album uh, All for Nathan. And uh, we have featured them on uh, some previous episodes. I believe uh, 27, 31, and 41. So you might want to check out those back episodes too. And uh, once again, uh, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, we do have uh, our fearless leader, Mr. Mux Blank. He is on special location. You know, uh, just finishing up a delivery. Uh, apparently, uh, he did not want to count on the post office. Uh, apparently they did say there were some type of massive delays with the post office and it could have taken months. So, uh, all the power to him. Delivery done early, whatever. Now he's on his way back. But, uh, uh, before we watched, uh, Exxon Metal, we saw B-Tongue Fragile. Now that is actually, uh, a Rat Baby stored with them, uh, back in the 2000s. Oh, yes. Teach that, yes. I don't know. But, uh, yes, so uh, they toured with uh, back in the 2000s. Also, uh, they were uh, in the band with uh, uh, Lead and Fumes. So uh, that was good. Now, you remember how I was telling everybody, hey, uh, the warning about cutting off body parts and stuff? You know, we, I was serious about that, yes. But uh, the animation on it was awesome, and it, they actually did look like real fingers to me. So, uh, but uh, uh, be warned, everybody. Uh, you know, I don't care if you got the Ginsu. If you cut it off, there's a good chance they will not be able to sew it back on and have it working the exactly way it did before. So, you know. And I don't think anybody. It's, I think it's illegal to sew those things too. So we might want to avoid that as well. 
No donations. But if anybody who has something that want to wants to uh, cut off some fingernails and try planting them, maybe that would be a good summer project for the kids. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, but I would highly recommend, uh, as a parent, you, you, you do that when the kid ain't watching, slip a seed in there or something. Make it a tomato plant or something. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah. And, and you know, it's funny, though, yeah, because, uh, well, you, you know, uh, you have kids, right, Becky? Yeah. So, uh, you know, wouldn't that be a, a, a that would have been a great spoof if your kid was in, uh, you know, some type of science class or something. And yeah. uh, you had her plant the fingernail, and in the meantime, you plant some type of other plant. You know, uh, tomato plant, zucchini, whatever it is, right? Just the reaction. Oh, yeah. That would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> my so, kids would have loved it. Yep, yep, yep. Especially my youngest. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, now, how have you been managing in the uh, post-apocalyptic... Uh, uh, you know, in time, you know, post-vaccination zone. Because uh, uh, I, I heard you said you got the uh, the Big Johnson. I got the uh, Pfizer and uh, uh, Mr. t Chad He got uh, uh, the Moderna. Yeah, so we got uh, America covered in that department. Any weird side effects or anything? No, not for me. Awesome. That's good. Well, uh, coming up next... We have uh, Scott Bailey coming up with uh, Paper Universe. And we're also going to be having some uh, uh, Temple Garden. Don't forget to brush. All right. Well, let's watch some Scott Bailey. See what happens. My name is Matt Phillips, and I am a paper collage artist. Growing up, I used to cut stuff out of the JCPenney holiday catalog for my Christmas list instead of writing it down. I used to love going through and cutting out the toys and stuff that I wanted and sticking it to a piece of paper. I used to love to draw like all the time. Finding some old sketches is funny. I used to do just like watercolor paints and stuff as a kid. Always, always very into being creative. Before I knew it, I was inspired, I guess, as cliche it is <laughs> to say, Andy Warhol because he would take um, you know, an image and then screen print it and then screen print it again and then scan it in and screen print it again and he would, you know, it's just all this mixed media from various forms. It starts off by me flipping through a magazine or an old book that I've found and just seeing what catches my eye. I see something, I kind of have to cut it out then. For me, it's very important to have that thought, use that thought right then and there. You know, I might not make a collage when I cut it out, but if it's a mountainscape, I'll cut out that mountainscape. Then I just start building on top of that. So it might start with the background. I really like that background. Now I want to find a foreground to go with it. Got that. Well, now I want to add different elements, maybe a middle ground. Um, and then if I like the outcome, eventually I just, you know, paste it all together. And if I am in, a mood where I need to kind of meditate within the art. I might use a lot more layers because I want to spend more time inside a piece. Um, but then some pieces may just come together that way without me even saying, oh, I want to use 15 layers or I want to use 10 layers. Um, sometimes it's two layers. So sometimes I'll have a foreground, a background, and say a subject, and it will sit in my draft space for couple days or a week and as I'm sifting through other stuff I might think that might apply to this there might be like one missing piece it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle it just happens I've learned not to force it for sure I know you're a big fan of widespread panic does some work for them yeah so I am a big fan and being from Athens I listened to it and became obsessed got in touch with some of the band members um, on social media some of the band members I guess decided they enjoyed it and asked me if I could do some of my work to their work. But I was very humbled to have the privilege to set in motion some, some cool work and then have them project it during the shows on the, on the big jumbotron. It's beyond incredible. 
and the way it makes you feel as an artist um, to be able to collaborate with one of your favorite bands to see that kind of stuff come to life. It's impossible to describe the feeling sometimes when you get done with the piece and you don't really remember making it or you didn't have any intention making it. It almost feels um, as if it's some sort of energy that is provoked either from within or something that I don't have control of. It's just the whole process, I guess, is probably my favorite part. That's it.
Welcome back to episode 43, Joker Joker TV. All right, uh, okay, so, uh, uh, what we just watched was, uh, Temple Garden Redshift. Uh, uh, Redshift is accompanied by a, uh, four-part radio drama miniseries that was inspired by the, uh, Golden Age Radio, such as, uh, Orson Welles. Now, uh, it was funny, uh, yesterday, while we were doing our setup and going over this stuff, right, uh... I happen to, uh, to to mention, hey, yeah, you remember listening to the old uh, radio shows on Sunday? You know, they'd be uh, on, you know, like right around, I don't know, 8 o'clock or so. And, uh, you know, some scary story, some murder mystery, whatever. I'm the only one that remembers that. So, uh, I guess I'm getting old or something. Must be. Right. So kind either, of ancient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that was before we had, like, uh, cable TV and internet and all that kind of good stuff. Lunatics. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, they did uh, uh, some uh, nine uh, CGE am- am- animation shop. Uh, uh, it's called uh, Italian Shopkeeper. Uh, so we'll have to uh, uh, tune in for that one and, uh, you know, see how that one turns out. Uh, also, we had uh, uh, some Cabbage Loop Pro. We're going to be talking about that on the... Uh, on the next go around, but um, uh, basically, uh, let's see where we were. Okay. Uh, chat. chat. Yes. Let's. Oh yes. Live from the smoke room, Rick shot Ricochet, Chatbot Bash. Welcome to live in the smoke room with Rick shot Ricochet. Yep. I'm the Ricochet, Ricochet, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, get live on the chat. Uh, fortunately, we have uh, uh, Miss Becky uh, Bryan uh, behind the, uh, the the chats right now, so she can actually read them. You know, it's it's funny. Uh, the older you get, uh, the smaller things get. So uh, for me, I otherwise I'd be staring, looking at my phone all the time. It'd be kind of annoying. But uh, earlier. We watched uh, uh, Temple Garden. What do we got up on the uh, in the in the chat thing, Mister C. John? I don't know. But, well, see, that's the uh, that the magic of uh, of a live broadcast. You know, we always do have some uh, technical difficulties. So uh, we are working that out. We uh, so apparently somebody turned the global warming off today. So uh, that has uh, frozen things up just a tad, and uh, we can barely no, see the it's chat. It's uh, well, it, right now it's at like uh, level like nineteen year old. Yeah, they can read it perfectly. Yes. It's it's up at the top on the on the left side. Okay, that's on YouTube. Oh, okay, well, maybe, who knows? Well, uh, you know, um, one of the things that we got to uh, watch earlier was uh, uh, Temple Garden Redshift, right? Yeah. And we also saw uh, Temple Garden, or Don't Forget to Brush. Now, these guys are actually from uh, Austin, Texas, and uh, uh, they de- their debut album was uh, a Redshift uh, release on... Uh, Actually, it's coming out on April the thirtieth. Uh, it's a. Uh, it says, "Don't forget to brush." From uh, Austin, Texas, the debut album uh, on Redshift released. Uh, going to be released uh, on April the thirtieth, twenty twenty one. That's the one that was Oh, okay. That was the one that was sixty six point six dollars. Yes. Right. Uh, and then uh, after that, we got to see some uh, uh, Redshift Garden, or uh, it was, that was also Temple Shift, uh, uh, Redshift. And uh, they uh, uh, accompanied a four-part radio drama miniseries uh, inspired by the golden age of radio and plays uh, Orson Welles. Yeah, I think I read that one already. 
Oops, sorry about that, folks. Oh, uh, and then uh, before that, we had Scott Bailey. Paper Universe. Now, uh, uh, he's also uh, AKA Scott Awesome. And he's actually played in Rat Babies and uh, uh, originated uh, uh, as a school project. So, um. Uh, Okay, awesome. Redshift, yes. Uh, uh, Temple Garden Redshift. Uh, don't forget to brush. Uh, yeah, that... Mr. DeMarco, how's it going? How's it going? I got arthritis in my arm and my balls sagging down to my kneecaps. But apart from that, pretty good. Okay. Hey, how's your mother? She's good. Yeah, she a beautiful woman. She's never been here. So refined, like a fine wine. But she lives 200 miles away. Oh, she's a fantastic. Well, anyway, just these two, please. 
Hey, what's this for? I'm making my favorite spaghetti with hot dogs. Spaghetti and a hot dog? Oh, no! Get out. And tell your mother not to call me anymore. Welcome back to episode 43, Joker Joker TV. And uh, uh, from a uh, um, on the road, we have a uh, special call-in guest, our fearless leader, Mr. Mux Blank, on uh, site, special location. Uh, are you with us, uh, Mux? Yes, can you hear you? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we can yes, hear you can loud hear and clear. You. So, uh, awesome. can you tell us what part of the planet are you on right now? Uh, I'm in Arkansas. I just passed through Little Rock. I'm on the highway. Nice. Uh, now, uh, does everything seem safe? Uh, I don't know. Is it safe for me to be on Joker Joker TV? Oh, yeah. I? Well, I mean, hey, you know, uh, we were talking about this. This is, uh, you know, the post, uh, you know, vaccination episode, right? You know, uh, you've already been through your two-week, uh, you know, uh, since you had the Big Johnson, and uh, Becky, she's yeah. had the Big Johnson, and uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, T-Chad, he's had the Moderna. I've had the Pfizer. So uh, it's kind of like we're going in uh, post-apocalyptic zone, you know, uh, especially with you in that hermetically sealed vehicle, you know, uh, yeah, with your own supplies. I just, I just came back from my post-apocalyptic wonderland. Now, uh, everybody on chat is saying hi to Mux. Uh, everybody on the chat is uh, actually saying hi to you, and they do miss you. Uh, but uh, hey, uh, uh, one of the things uh, I, I've been filling everybody in on was that uh, you've been on a special assignment with a uh, delivery of uh, uh, toys that were manufactured right here in the Joker Joker Gallery. You know, uh, <laughs> the remote bunker. Yep. So, uh, yeah, can you tell I us how that's gone, to, uh, and how, what, what, have, what have you been doing since then? Uh, 
boys out to uh, California. Uh, that was for. Uh oh. Well, uh, we're having some reception problems, folks. Uh, you know, like I said, we are having some weather anomalies. And uh, he is in a hermetically sealed uh, uh, vehicle right now that uh, sometimes the reception goes in and out. Is he back on yet? Well, we can kind of, we can see you there, but uh, we cannot hear you. So, uh, and that's the uh, the the wonders of uh, of uh, live uh, broadcast. Uh, now, uh, basically, uh, one of the things we were watching was uh, Cabbage Looper. Now he did uh, put on a couple of good ones. Uh, this uh, uh, one that we saw uh, was called uh, Looper Nova Beer. Now. Uh, Okay, Cabbage Bamp, that was the one we saw before that, yes. And then uh, after that, we saw uh, uh, Looper Nova, that was beer. Okay, and uh, that is uh, Mike Dyer. He's a AKA Cabbage Looper. Uh, now, uh, Looper Nova was actually a project that he did with uh, Brent Davenport and uh, Jackson Dodd. And he runs uh, the uh, the Athens, Georgia label of uh, Echo Bass Records. So uh, be on the lookout for uh, for some more stuff coming out from uh, Cabbage Looper, and uh, uh, let's see what he's coming out with. Uh, after that, we've got uh, had some chicken burger disco. It, that was a uh, uh, zesty chicken. Now. Uh, Oh, the Swamp Rainbow. Let's see. Do I have that one in the net? Okay. Yeah, so, uh, uh, well, we're, well, we had Swamp Rainbow. Uh, Surf Rock City. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of on a blind spot on that one. I'm sure somebody knows something about that. I, I, yeah, I'm sorry, Mux, I should have done the research, but, uh, I kind of pawned off on, uh, poor Becky over here. You know. <laughs> She's doing a heck of a job, though. <laughs> it was in your notes. Thank <laughs> you. 
Welcome back to episode 43, Joker Joker TV, post-vaccination to zone uh, uh, episode. Uh, anyhow, uh, we, uh, we have been uh, watching some uh, chicken burger disco, uh, and we watched uh, uh, Zesty Chicken. Now, uh, you know, his real name is uh, actually uh, Dylan Stanford. And he's from Illinois. And uh, he actually works with us on uh, another project with the Virtually Assembled Assembly Required. And uh, he makes a lot of videos with uh, kids, toys, characters. He works with a lot of uh, uh, fantastic plastics, too. And uh, he does a lot of visuals and mix downs. So uh, we're going to have another one come up uh, that he's uh, doing. We're going to be watching next, and that's uh, called uh, Everybody's Got to Exercise. So, uh, uh, and then after that, we've got uh, another one, and that one is called Heads. A Mural is Worth a Thousand Words by James Murphy. So, uh,. Got to uh, let's uh, hit let's hit the go button. Uh, are you ready to watch some uh, chicken burger disco? Yeah, I'm ready. I exercise. think so. Let's hit it.
everybody's got to exercise. Well, everybody's trying to do it. Stand with your feet together, buttocks tight, stomach pulled in. And exhale. America's favorite cartoon witch, and I want my Joker Joker TV.
Welcome back to episode 43, Joker Joker TV. They're having another great episode. These, uh, what are we calling this? This is the post-vaccination episode. We just got done watching uh, uh, Heads. Uh, the first one that we watched uh, was uh, Heads, A Mural is Worth a Thousand Words. And the one we just watched was uh, actually called Smiles. Uh, oh, that's the next one? Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm jumping ahead already. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but anyway, uh, to, just to give you a little uh, backstory on the one we're going to watch, it's uh, by Fabian Will Simon. Or Fabian Willie Simon, actually. Uh, uh, they, they're they actually founded in Berlin uh, in 2014. The uh, newest album was actually released, uh, uh, released uh, Push Out on uh, Glitter House Records back in uh, 2020. Featured on, uh, actually, on Joker Joker uh, episode 17. Wow. So, uh, learning some history today. Yeah, now, uh, you know, uh, all the people out there that uh, might get offended that I call the Johnson & Johnson the Big Johnson, the, the whole reason I call it that is because it's the one-shot deal, right? You know, everybody else is getting the two-shot, right? You know, now they're talking about boosters for the other ones, right? But the Big Johnson, that's holding out to one, right? It only takes one to get the job done. Exactly, yes. So, uh, you know... Uh, anybody saying anything good in the chat? You know, uh, oh, Abby is, uh, I think, uh, uh, trying to send a, uh, a link. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, well, yeah. Oh, uh, she said she posted it already. Well, anyway, you know, uh, and yeah, I wanted to remind everybody to uh, tune in. Live, uh, 6.30 uh, uh, on Thursdays, uh, Eastern Daylight Time. That would be uh, uh, for everybody that's uh, around the world watching. You know, that would be uh, like New York time, America time. So, uh, uh, oh, there's a cowgirl. She said uh, she wished she had a Johnson. Oh, yep. Y you know something? Yes. In fact, never. Now, you know, it's funny because... Uh, as soon as they pulled them off the market, everybody's craving the Big Johnson. You know, go figure. So hopefully get, they get that one worked out and get everybody, uh, you know, the big one shot, the money shot, or whatever they call it, you know. The Big Johnson. Uh, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, next week, uh, wherever uh, Mr. Uh, Max Blank is on the planet, you know, uh, we uh we hopefully he'll be in a location where uh uh in his hermetically sealed van uh he'll be able to get a good signal so uh in the meantime uh, uh make sure you uh uh, uh go to uh, uh the joker joker site and uh check out uh mr blank toys and uh, uh rat babies uh, they also have all their Instagram links. That's, I'm sure it's somewhere on the uh, YouTube thing. I'm not all that technically savvy. Uh, what do you, uh, Becky? You probably know where that stuff is, and you'll make sure that it's on there by the time we have yep, this we'll thing officially on there. Okay, everybody. Um, everybody who's in the chat probably already sees this. Um, Avi Ezor is now doing uh, blogging videos. And he is trying to post his link, but we're having some technical difficulties and it's not coming through. Um, so we will try to get that up for you as well. Awesome. So that's why she asked if she could post. Oh, wow, well, because it came up. Uh, yeah, that was weird. Okay, let's see. Yeah, there. Uh, see, that's the uh, you know, the magic of uh, of live chat, especially. You know, the uh, the thing is, I I do my best to make it look like I'm like thirty. You know, but uh, in reality, I'm like fifty two. I'm uh, I can barely even see the computer. They actually have it set up on Magoo setting. 
But uh, uh, I wanted to thank everybody for being on the show. Oh, Abby, I'm so sorry. Yes. See, that's the uh, magic of not being able to really see the screen. So, uh, but uh, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, he yeah he's looking for something cool for you. Letting it, um, letting the link come through. Yeah, for some reason his link is not coming through. Yeah, he says when he does, it says currently text only. Currently text only. Yeah, so it's not allowing him to add a link. Well, we'll have to figure that one out. The magic te technology. Uh, so hopefully, uh, whatever that front or back end solution is, will be taken care of. We'll fix the firmware. Maybe with the Big Johnson. Who knows? Right? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh, yes. Yeah, safe travels, mucks. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, get through those states where there's uh, could be uh, reports of alien abductions or, uh, you know, the weird pervert things. And uh, hopefully you have enough food and supplies. I knew you took a massive supply with you just in case there was a massive zombie apocalypse fortunately we've heard some good stuff and uh uh i know that you were uh, out in the salt and sea someplace okay we're gonna have to edit this but avi got his link in the oh yes yeah. see that's Do how the they used to do it on all the, the dating app, sites and like when you, you know dot, somebody would be sharing a number period. they'd be like Doing some of it in numbers and some of it in words and You got it or do you want me to fix it? No, okay. Whatever. Everybody'll understand. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Well we are ready and uh thanks for watching and uh enjoy the rest of the show. And until next time. Thanks for being on Joker Joker T V. Don't forget to tune in next week. Yep. See you guys. Bye. Like a shadow